Animating should not be creative. I know that sounds crazy, but in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to take out the creativeness out of the animation process. If you follow these steps, not only will your animation have better direction, you'll also save an insane amount of time when animating. Now this won't apply if you're working on an animation production. But let's say you have full creative freedom. Let's say this is for your demo reel. In that case, take a look at every single piece of good animation you've done, analyze it, see where your weak points are and what you're missing. Let's say you love animating action scenes and you're pretty good at it. Well, that's fantastic, but if you want to become a well-rounded animator and increase your chances of getting hired, you need to show that you can do some acting shots as well. This means getting closer to the character, working with their facial expressions, mastering lip sync, and getting better at storytelling. And so the first step is to identify your weak points and choosing to work on them. The second step is to make more concrete choices regarding your shot. If you want to include a dialogue clip, make sure to choose one that inspires you as soon as possible. It's a lot harder to figure out a whole story and then trying to find the dialogue clips that would go with that story. So what you want to do is find a dialogue clip that inspires you, that makes you come up with a story based on what you hear, and that will make the process way easier. However, if your shot doesn't include any dialogue, now you have the chance to be as creative as you want to be. So take some time and write down as many stories as you find interesting. I'm sure you've been inspired by movie scenes you've seen before and thought to yourself, man, I'd love to animate something like that. Well, this is your chance to make that dream come true. So go with your guts and choose the idea that not only you like the most, but you can envision in your head already. That is very clear in your head. Go with that one and trust me, this will make the whole process so much easier. Don't put your pen and paper away yet. It's time to really go deep and develop your story. Every shot, even a very simple one, needs to tell a story. So you really want to ask yourself these questions. Who is your character? Where are they? What are they doing right now? What are they feeling? Is there anyone else either in frame or off the screen? Are they being affected by their environment like wind or being affected by others around them? The more you know about your character and your environment, the better because Every decision you make will be tied together to a cohesive story that makes sense. Now keep in mind, your audience doesn't need to know the answer to every single one of these questions, but you having the answer to those questions and applying them in your story will actually make the viewer, the audience, relate to your character better which is the whole point of telling a story. You want the audience to be able to relate to the character. If there's a cohesive story behind your shot, you'll have a way higher chance of the audience relating to your character and liking the character and liking the shot more. I'm sure you've seen shows or short films or animations where the animation's really cool and like cool stuff's happening, but the decisions the characters are making don't really make sense or align with their values. It ruins the whole thing. It, it ruins it for the audience and you don't want to do that to your audience. Now that you know everything about your shot, it's time to start stitching together your scene. This might include the creation of a simple set, choosing a rig whose appearance makes sense with your dialogue, bringing in your dialogue clip, and figuring out the composition by choosing the right camera angle. Having some basic knowledge of good composition would be really handy at this stage, which is why it's a good idea to watch a lot of good movies. By watching a lot of movies, you'll naturally start creating a visual library in your head, and then you can pick and choose from the different good compositions that you've seen previously to make your shot stand out. At this point, you might also find it useful to start doing some storyboards. Now, when you do storyboards, don't try and plan out every single gesture that the character does because if you do that, then in the next step, your actions and your acting is going to feel a lot more robotic. It's time to shoot your references or find them online. I would really recommend making your own references unless it's physically impossible. I'm saying it for a couple of reasons. As you yourself act out your shot, you can kind of feel which actions feel more natural for that particular dialogue or for your character. And another benefit is that you can make multiple different takes and kind of feel out what feels best. This also helps because you might like the part of one reference and then like a different part of another reference and then you can stitch them together for the final reference and you wouldn't have all that variety if you find your reference online instead of making it yourself. Recording your references is a crucial step and it's also why I said not to 
plan out all the different actions on paper in the previous step because you might think you know what you want the character to do but the second you stand up and start acting it out you'll realize that it's just unnatural and it looks weird so just let your body figure out what the most honest acting is for that particular shot and remember if it doesn't look and feel right in the reference stage, it's not gonna magically feel and look right in the animation stage. This step can save you a lot of time because you can quickly re-record actions and re-record acting, but you can't do that when, after you've already animated it and you realize it doesn't work. So figure out the best reference that works for you and then move on to animation. This will save you tens of hours, if not more, if you do it right. Another, and I promise, last reason to record a reference yourself is that you might make a lot of micro expressions that you wouldn't have thought about animating if you just imagined what the character was gonna do. So having this extra layer of detail will really help push your shot to the next level. So you wanna give yourself the best chance possible by having as much information as possible before you start animating. It's time to edit and analyze your acting. So take all the references you made, pick the best one, or if you need to, go into an editing software and stitch together the best versions of each part that you liked and create your final reference video. Even if you're not the best actor and the expressions on your character aren't the best, you can still make it work in the animation stage if you have a final goal in mind, you know what expressions you're trying to achieve. So your acting skills aren't gonna hold you back, you just wanna make sure the reference works beforehand. So bring your master reference into SyncSketch or whatever other software you like doing drawovers and taking notes on and start marking what is important for your shot. Let's say there's an eye dart that really adds something to a particular point of the animation. Make a note in the video so you don't forget about it later when you're deep into posing your character. Unless you're doing a body mechanics heavy shot, I would focus on more highlighting important story beats and acting beats, including those nice micro expressions. And once you're done writing out all the notes, you can download the video with the notes and either refer to it on the side or bring it into your animation file if that's how you roll. We have a ton of lessons on setting up your shot, recording references, and professionally analyzing those references and breaking them down in our ultimate animation course. So if detailed and high quality step-by-step -step videos interest you, check out toanimate.ca and learn more. Now it's finally time to start animating. I know all the stuff we covered sounds like a lot, but if you take a couple of hours to create a really nice roadmap for your animation before you start animating, as someone who has spent thousands of hours animating, I'm telling you, it's gonna save you so much time once you actually start animating. It might be tempting to try and skip these steps or some of these steps, but I promise you, if you do that, you'll end up running into issues you wouldn't have had otherwise, and it will take way longer than if you had just done the steps before animating. If you decide to try this process in your next shot, you can let me know down below how it went for you. And if you wanna learn more about building a visual library in your head, I would recommend watching this video right here. So go ahead and give it a watch.